Hello. Today we're working on the seventh and last activity of Learn to Code 2. This activity is called Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks is a challenge and in this challenge we're supposed to use all of our coding skills to collect a randomly determined number of gems. And we can tell when we're done because uh, the randomly the random number of gems that we're given is represented by the variable total gems here, total gems. So total gems will have the value of the number of gems we need to collect each time. So if we look at this puzzle here and I run this, I say run my code, notice where the white wireframes show up and also notice that uh, I, each time I run this, this time I had zero out of six gems collected. If I run it again, the wireframes show up and gems show up in different places and a different number of gems show up. So this time we have seven gems to collect. And one more time, here we only have two gems to collect. But these gems can show up anywhere where these white wireframe gems uh, appear. So if we keep running this, notice that the, the white wireframes are anywhere along these two outer rows, here and here, or at the ends of the blue platform, here and here, okay? So that's what this challenge is all about. We're going to need to clean up all the gems on this row and this row and then we're also going to need to clean up the gems on the ends of this platform. Alright, notice also that our, uh, we're probably going to have to do some jumping because uh, there's a lot of like large um, sort of steps that we need to go uh, across as we climb up this wall and then maybe as we climb up this wall here. So uh, we know also that this platform is going to need to be raised at least once, maybe more than that, maybe lots of times, uh, raised and lowered. So we're going to need an instance of expert and we're also going to need an expert of character because character is the only kind of, uh, the only kind of being that we have that can jump. So uh, let's start by putting an instance of expert right in front of this lock, the blue lock right here, so he can help us out. So that, uh, that grid location is column one, row four. Column one, row four. So let's create an instance of our expert. And um, instead of calling them expert and character today, I'm gonna give them some fun names. Uh, this is our last activity in this chapter, so let's call uh, the expert Sam. So let Sam equal an instance of expert, okay? And let's uh, also create our character. And the character, uh, let's just get him on here for right now. And uh, let's put him right here and uh, at, at, uh, at at column five, row zero. So let, uh, maybe uh, the character's name is Fred, Fred. So Fred is an instance of character. Okay, and let's place them. So we say world.place, and I'm using this one right here because I'm gonna want to give them a direction. World.place, and let's place the expert facing the direction dot north. We get choices dot north, dot south, dot east, dot west. We can fix this later if we need to. And remember we're at column one, row four. So column one, row four. And let's go ahead and put our, uh, also put our uh, Fred, the character here. So world, oops, <laughs> I made a mistake up here. This shouldn't be expert. We didn't call it expert, we called him Sam. Sam, right? So world.place, and let's put Fred here. Fred, world.place, I'm gonna choose this, uh, this one right here again. And Sam is going in, I'm sorry, Fred is going in here direction. Let's also put him dot north, and then we can fix things. At column five, row zero column five, row zero. And let's run our code and see where they pop up and if they're facing the right direction. 
Okay, uh, Sam, the expert, is definitely facing the right direction, and possibly Fred is also, depending on what we decide to do with with uh, Fred. Okay, uh, now let's start breaking this problem up into pieces here. I know that um, one thing we're going to want to do, we said we're going to want to be able to clean up these rows of gems that are on these, uh, that, that, that have lots of jumps involved in them. We're going to need to jump up, then jump down, then jump up, and so on. So let's see if we can just write a function to clean up one of these rows of gems. That will really save us some time. And then we also, you know, we'll abstract that idea away and we don't need to think about all the details involved in cleaning up a row of gems anymore. So uh, let's do that. Let's say func uh, clean up, clean up row by jumping, okay, because he's going to have to jump. Now we could do a while loop here. We could say as long as we're not at the end of this, as long as we're not blocked, let's keep doing something. That's fine. That would work just great. But uh, we also, it looks like each one of these has the same number in them. So we could also do a for loop. Uh, I'm going to try it using a for loop here. And we're going to need to, let's see, how many times will we need to jump? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. So let's call this function uh, Fred clean row by jumping. Okay, and in there we're going to have a for loop for do something one to six times. And the thing we're going to want to do is if there's a gem. Uh, remember, if we, we, we have the possibility of a gem appearing, uh, oh yeah, this isn't going to work right now. Uh, we have a possibility of a gem appearing right here where Fred is now. We should maybe uh, have Fred now uh, cl uh, clean up a gem or something like that. Collect gem and then jump. Okay, so that's what we want him to do six times, is we want him to collect a gem on the uh, on the tile that he's on right now, if there is a gem, and then we want him to jump to the next tile so that he's ready to do it again. Okay, so let's create that function. First I'm going to fix this for loop here, so for something in 1 to 6, add a syntax error then, and now this red button is saying I don't know what you mean by collect gem and jump because we haven't written that function yet. So function collect gem uh, then jump will look something like this. We'll say if Fred is on a gem then we will go ahead and say Fred you collect that gem Okay, and then after you've collected the gem, we want Fred to jump. Okay, so he's going to do that function, this function, which is collect gem, then jump. He's going to do that six times in the Fred clean row by jumping function. Okay, so uh, let's see, collect gem, then jump. So let's try this out now down here let's call our method uh, Fred clean row by jumping okay and we still have an error here collect gem then jump collect gem then jump I think this is okay uh, let's try running it okay it's running Sometimes these errors uh, stick around in your code, but it's not really an error anymore. Okay, he did it. He cleaned up this whole row. So that's great. This, this function, Fred clean row by jumping, is doing exactly what we want it to do. Okay. Now, uh, we want him to maybe turn left and get onto this platform right here so he can come over to this next row and clean up the next row. But 
before we do that, let's get the expert to raise this platform up to a place where he will be able to jump onto it. In fact, we can do that before we do anything right down in here. We can say, Sam, uh, turn the lock up. Oh, let's try it. Uh, let's see. True. Let's try turning it up uh, three times, something like that. Oh, maybe just two times I think will be fine. Okay, uh, now, hmm, so, okay, let's try that. And then when Fred gets done cleaning up this row, he can then turn left, Fred dot turn left. And he can jump onto the platform, but he should also check if he has a gem on him and then jump. And we already have a function to do that which is called collect gem then jump. So let's say, uh, whoops, that's not what we want. Collect gem then jump. Collect gem then jump. So that will get him onto this uh, next platform here. So let's make sure that works. Okay, our platforms are up into a nice position here. He's collecting all the gems. It says here we have 11 gems to collect, but I don't see that many on the screen. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. We picked up two of them. There are one, two, three, four gems on the screen now. But it says we need to pick up an 11, so including the ones that we picked up, two already, and the four that are on the screen, that's only six. Six gems, I only see six gems. Uh, the other two are either hidden, or possibly as we keep moving, gems might show up behind us. Uh, that's going to make things a little bit tricky for us. We're going to need to maybe backtrack over some areas we already checked and collect those gems. So, okay, at this point, we just said collect then jump onto here, and we can also then uh, maybe collect then jump one more time to get onto the next, uh, onto the next platform. And then we want to turn to the left, Fred dot turn to the left again. And now he's set up so that he can clean up a row and then uh, turn to the left again, right? And do that all over again. Okay, so now I'm wondering if we put all these things from, let's see, let me fix this here. If we put all things from this code right here to here, if we put all these in a function that says something like clean row and turn left, then we could run again clean row and turn left and we'll end up uh, back over here where we started from, I think. Uh, so let's, uh, for right now, let's just copy and paste this twice. Copy and then I'll paste it twice. And then we may put this into a loop so that this happens twice. Or, or as many times as we need it to. Okay, so let's do this clean. I'll, I'll make a comment in here. Clean row turn left, or turn corner left. And we'll do that again down here because this is the same code. Clean row turn corner left. If this works out fine, and we clean up the whole puzzle, or at least these two rows, and uh, then we will put these into a function and, and do them over and over again. Okay, so let's run this code. Okay, this says we have 12 to pick up, and there are only one, two, three, four, five on the screen. 
right now. So yeah, this must be that as you move along, more gems keep popping up. That makes this one interesting. Okay, so he's cleaning up a row by jumping. Then he's gonna turn to the left, collect gem and jump, collect gem and jump, turning to the left, and now he's doing this all again. Cleaning up a row by jumping. Then he'll turn to the left, collect gem then jump, collect gem then jump, turn to the left and he's ready to do it all again. And notice some more gems, three more gems have popped up. So yeah, we need to keep going around and around this circle here, doing this uh, over and over again until we get all the gems. Okay, because gems are just going to keep popping up uh, randomly uh, somewhere along this path. So let's do that. Let's take this right here, this whole bit of code right here, and let's do that and we'll say uh, cut this out of here and we'll make a function up here called clean row, clean row, turn corner left. Okay, and we'll paste that in here. Now this, in order to do a whole circle, one lap around this whole puzzle, we need to do this twice, right? We need to do that twice. So we can put this in a loop here. And let's just say, right now, let's just say while something is true, which is always, let's just keep cleaning row, turn corner to the left, and then do it again clean row, turn corner to the left. That's uh, make one entire lap around puzzle collecting gems. Okay, and we're gonna keep doing that over and over and over again. Okay, so I'll run the code fast here just to make sure that this keeps working, uh, that we're going around and around and around. Okay, here we only have four gems, so uh, we may not get to go all the way around, but let's try it. Okay, now he's doing his second clean row and turn corner to the left. Okay, yeah, this is good. He's just going to keep doing this until he's done. Now we need to set some kind of stopping condition and the stopping condition here because we saw that gems can keep popping up behind us we're gonna need to stop as soon as we have all the gems collected and that's where this variable up at the beginning is going to be useful. This was given to us there's a variable called total number of gems and that total number of gems represents the total we need to collect so Let's stop this puzzle. We're gonna to need to have a counter in here, a counter variable that represents the total number we have collected up to some point. So let's do that. Let's put maybe after we put our characters into position here. Um, actually, we'll do it down here, uh, right up in here, looks good. Let's make a variable and let's say number of gems collected number of gems collected and we haven't collected any yet so let's call that zero and now we know we want to stop when uh, or we guess we want to keep going cleaning up the rows and turning corner to the left or making laps around this as long as number of gems collected is less than the number we need to get in all which is total gems so let's say that total gems here is less than total gems. So another way of saying this is as long as we have gems left to collect, we want to keep making laps around the puzzle collecting gems. That's all this loop is saying. As long as we have gems left to collect, which means our number of gems we have collected is still less than the total we need to collect, then we want to keep making laps around the puzzle, collecting gems, okay. Now, what's the last thing we need to do here? There's something, and I forget this a lot, so this is a very common bug. Uh, don't forget 
that our number of gems collected starts at zero and it'll stay zero here unless we do one important thing and that's make it go up by one every time we collect a gem. Okay, So we need to increment or make our variable number of gems collected go up by one every time we collect a gem and the perfect place to do that is right after we collect a gem. So here's our line of code in this function collect gem then jump that's where we collect the gem so that's the perfect place to say number of gems collected plus equals one okay now this may not work because it may not know about number of gems collected but let's give it a try here and see if this will work oh, yep it's working I think We only have two gems to collect. This may not work. Oh, it worked. Okay, great. Very good. All right, so what we did here is we made a variable called number of gems collected, which represents the number of gems that the character has, or Fred has. And then every time in this function up here, every time we uh, collect a gem, we add one to that value, okay? And let's run it one more time while we walk through this and see if we can get a puzzle with a lot of them. No, that's no good. Uh, let's see if we can get one with like 12 or 13 or so. Here we go. Here's 12, and there are only four on the screen, so some will keep popping up behind him now. Okay, and while he continues on with this, let's talk about what we did here. So we made lots of good functions that are abstract ideas of things we want to do. The first is clean row and turn corner to a left. Okay, and the second is do it again, clean row and turn corner to, a le to the left. And together, these two make up the idea of making an entire lap around the puzzle. In fact, we could have put these two in a function called make lap around the puzzle or something like that. Then this would be even a little cleaner. Uh, but now, inside clean row and turn corner to the left, this function, we have another function called clean up a row by jumping, which just handles a single row. And then the part where we turn the corner to the left is just a turn left, collect gem, then jump, collect then jump, then jump, and then turn left. He's almost done. He just got his 12th gem. So when he gets to the end of this row, in the while loop will check, do you have all your gems? And we do. And both Fred and Sam do a great little dance. They're very excited. They work together and solve this puzzle. Okay. All right, good. Lots of nice functions in here. Um, and then a nice short main program. That's a good indication that we abstracted enough of the details away uh, to make this main program very readable and very understandable. Uh, but if you want to see the details, you can always come up into the functions and check them out. Okay? All right, this is a good time to review here. We're ending this chapter on parameters. And remember, parameters are information that gets sent into a function. So in a case like, um, in a case like this right here, turn lock, turn lock, well, a turn lock has two bits of information. What direction do we want to turn the lock, either up or down? That's a Boolean. And how many times do you want to turn the clock? Or, sorry, turn the lock. So two bits of information can get passed into the function to help the function do uh, be more uh, be more useful to us. Okay, so that's what a parameter is. If you want to see the uh, definition provided in the playgrounds. It says the name of an input value to a function used in the definition of the function and again it's uh, included in there to make the function more useful. Okay. Uh, then initialization here. Initialization is just the act of creating a new instance of a type and we did that twice in here. We created two instances of two different types. We created Sam, who's an instance of expert, and Fred, who's an instance of character. And then methods, we talked about this in the last activity. A method is just a function, 
it's a function that is called on an instance. So for example, when we say turn left here, turn left is a function, but it needs an instance to call it on. So Fred dot turn left, we can call turn left a function or a method. So a method is just a function that's called on an instance there. And finally, variables. Uh, variables is a container, or think of it as a box, where you can store a value, and we can change that value anytime we want to. So we created a nice variable in here called uh, number of gems collected, and we put the value zero in to start with, but every time we collect a gem, we are bumping that value up by one. So number of gems starts at zero, then it goes to one, then to two, then to three, and so on every time we collect a gem. Okay, that's it for today, everyone. Uh, and the next chapter is going to be a chapter called World Building, and things are going to get fairly interesting there. So uh, come join us uh, when you're ready. Uh, good job, everyone. See you next time.